I know different churches are coming back uh, into uh, people worship, depending on the where they are and what is allowed in their community or in their county or their state. Um, how should churches approach commitment campaigns in light of the current reality? Yeah, well, well thank you for that question. Um, I think it's a really important one because uh, if your church has traditionally relied on a commitment campaign, uh, by all means, uh, my, my first answer to that question would be uh, do a commitment campaign. Uh, last year, uh, believe it or not, uh, there were churches who just couldn't imagine doing a commitment campaign. Um, they couldn't stretch their imagination to think about how they could possibly do it while they were in pandemic mode, or they were afraid of, of talking with their people about commitment uh, during a time when there was economic uncertainty, and some decided just not to do campaigns. And I think um, they surely made their situation worse. <laughs> and so uh, my first word would be to say, if your congregation is one that has traditionally had a commitment campaign as part of their uh, stewardship effort, then you wanna make sure that you're planning a campaign for the fall. And this is, if you do your campaign in the fall, this is about the time of year when you should start thinking about, about how you're gonna approach it. Um, there's a chapter in our book that deals with pledges and commitment campaigns, and it shares um, a number of best practices. I think that there are two of those practices that are particularly relevant given uh, the current reality. One is uh, the idea that a sort of a one size fits all approach to a commitment campaign um, never really works. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's not the most effective approach under normal circumstances, but I think under these particular circumstances, when, as I mentioned earlier, everyone's sort of in a different boat in terms of, of what the, the financial reality is that they're facing, I think it's even more important that when planning a commitment campaign, you look at ways to be a bit more personalized uh, and tailor your messages according to people's circumstances. Now, part of that involves knowing what people's giving patterns have been. Um, you know, if every congregation has some people who are very generous givers, they're tithers, they're sacrificial givers, uh, they're very regular, they're very faithful. Um, every congregation also has a large group of people who, who give, but maybe not quite as regularly or predictably. They've got room to grow in their giving. And then every congregation, believe it or not, has a fairly substantial group of people who, who, who just don't give at all. And one of the problems in a commitment campaign, if you just kind of broadcast the same message about giving and pledging to those different kinds of people, the, the, the message is, isn't going to be right for any of them. Uh, for someone who's never given a dime to the church before, I don't think it makes sense to ask them to start with a pledge or a tithe. On the other hand, if you've got people who are very uh, regular and, and sacrificial givers, they need to hear um, a message of how important their giving is and, and how important it is for them to continue to be generous. And so I always recommend that in the context of a commitment campaign, a church uh, think about, thinks about ways it can tailor some different messages to meet the reality of those different kinds of givers. Now that does mean that somebody needs to be paying attention to who gives what, um, but I think in this particular circumstances, what stands when we know that people have been impacted differently by the pandemic, it makes even more sense uh, to really take a look at the situation of your givers and um, not just use a one size fits all. You, you might need to have some different messages or different events to talk to different people, uh, depending on what their circumstances the other um, best practice with regard to commitment campaigns that I think is relevant in this time is that um, I usually advise congregations to periodically vary the approach that they take to their campaign. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you have done house parties for the last three years, um, uh, you might find that you connect with some other people by switching uh, what this year to a letter writing campaign. Uh, this probably isn't the year for a consecration Sunday model because you probably aren't going to have a lot of people gathering in, in, in person. I, I think, you know, churches are all over the place in terms of where they are. You know, some churches are practically back to normal in terms of 
with their practices. There are other churches that are really taking baby steps uh, and don't really know yet where they're going to be in terms of their ability to meet face to face come fall. And so, you know, you'll want to think about that. Uh, you know, how, how can your campaign model fit with where your congregation is in terms of it uh, resuming some of the practi regular practices of congregational life? Um, but I think regardless, um, your goal needs to be to try to connect with your givers in the most personal way possible. That's always advice that I give. The more personal the message is, the more personal the appeal is, the more effective it's gonna be. I think one of the positive outcomes for many churches during this pandemic period is they realize how powerful uh, some you know, uh, digital platforms like Zoom can be in terms of creating a very rich emotional um, uh, and relational connection. And so I know churches that did their campaigns last year via Zoom, and they, and they found that that was a really effective way to engage people in conversation around giving and even to secure commitments electronically. Uh, I think another kind of approach that might be useful in, in this particular environment might be personal letter writing campaigns. Um, I've had good luck with that in my own church, you know, dividing the congregation up among a number of leaders who will then personally write uh, to people asking them for their pledges. And um, that can be a very personal and effective way. So, you know, you need to think about where you are, um, you know, whether you're, you're, you're back to normal and able to have a commitment Sunday or a consecration Sunday, or whether you need to, you know, continue to rely on, on uh, some um, socially distanced ways of engaging people. But either way, uh, it's important to uh, engage people as personally as you can. And so I would be looking to integrate that into your campaign uh, planning as you go into the fall. And a, a brief follow-up, uh, can you just give an example of an approach you would take for a, uh, the community of non-givers that have never given before? Yeah, th yeah thank you for that question. So um, I, I have come to believe um, that for people who just simply are non-contributors in your church, uh, a pledge campaign doesn't really connect. Uh, because if you have never um, given before, the idea that you're going to make a pledge or, or, or pledge a tithe is just that's a that's a really that's a really big leap for somebody. And so um, I believe in one of my mantras is that people always give before they pledge your tithe. They always give before they pledge your tithe. And so, so somebody who's not a giver, um, I think the 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 focus needs to be on. Um, inviting them to give rather than inviting them to make a pledge. And so uh, when, I, when I have organized commitment campaigns in my own church, what I do is I segregate out the non-givers and, and they receive a different kind of appeal. Um, they, they're asked to make, make, make a gift. Uh, and and the, uh, um, the goal is to really remind them of the good work that the church does and encourage them simply to get started by making a gift. Um, since most uh, pledge campaigns come toward the end of the year, a lot of people are thinking about making gifts anyways. And so um, that, that's the approach, the approach that I take. Um, and then once someone starts giving, it makes more sense to talk with them about pledging. Thank you. Very good, Anne. Thank you.